Hey, let's go live with James speaking, trainingsites.io. Uh, I was thinking back, uh, I saw a couple of videos actually on YouTube that are kind of popped up on my stream and they're really indicative where I think we are in the end of 2025, getting ready for 2026. And um, the video that I saw was of some younger adults, let's say under 30, and the person doing the videos was asking them uh, what a particular piece of office equipment was. And the one that I laughed the hardest about, of course, was the overhead projector. They had no idea what an overhead projector was. And of course, uh, me being in the education space for a long, long time, I lived and died with an over, uh, overhead projector. And if you're a little long, young to remember what they were, it was the only way that we could actually project something up on a screen at the time when we first started. So you had this device that you had to get close enough to the screen that it would show up properly and it blocked everyone who was in the class or in the room that was actually trying to watch you up front. But you put a see-through piece of plastic that had the text or whatever that was on it and it projected it on the wall. So you had to have an overhead projector and a screen to actually get any information across. And of course, these people looking at it had no idea at all what the heck it was. And if I think back to the times when, you know, when we first started out teaching or doing courses, overhead projectors, I remember we used to bring easels with uh, uh, flip charts on them. And, you know, if you were actually teaching a class, you'd write something as best you could, rip off the paper and even tape it up against the wall. So you'd have all of these flip chart pages all over and maybe you had an overhead projector. But these were the best tools that we had at the time when we were teaching. And I really think right now we're kind of at that transition point where, you know, overhead projectors and those pieces kind of got put to the side when a PowerPoint and these slide decks were available. Um, we're in that spot right now when it comes to AI. I think we're at that part where some people have tools and are kind of getting a hold of the tools. We've got these PowerPoint decks that are now being available. The question becomes, what happens next? And what I mean by the AI space by that is I look at the PowerPoints, uh, sorry, the overhead projectors and the flip charts. That's like many people starting out with AI. They're doing stuff like learning how to prompt. And there's all sorts of really great prompting skills and formats and structures, and you should really go and learn that. Uh, on the other hand, you may get a little more involved like this year, and it's all been about vibe coding for apps, uh, for doing automations, simple AI automations. So, you know, it's like having a PowerPoint deck. It was a step way farther than what we normally could do when we we're doing any kind of teaches slash courses. So we've got this real transition between prompts, prompt engineering, some forms of automation or allowing us to remove ourselves from what's happening or the things that we do on a repetitive basis. But I think the big jump is coming this year and the even bigger picture is, is that 2026 is gonna be all about strategy and not the tools that we use. So if you're in this space where you're thinking, how am I gonna keep up? What tools should I use? Slow down on the tools and just listen to this, at least consider what I'm saying the next time you see the latest and greatest brand new tool that came out from someone, whether it be ChatGPT or Gemini or Google or Anthropic or you know X or any of these things, there's all sorts of tools that are gonna come out today, tomorrow, in the next hour, and it's only gonna get faster and bigger. So we've got all of these tools, but the question is, what do we do with them? And I think the tipping point here in 2026 is avatars. And I wanna show you why. This whole structure of avatars is the ultimate reflection of replacing ourselves and the question becomes, how are we going to leverage our avatars or structure our business knowing that those avatars are available? So it's not AI and automations. We can do that. It's not putting the prompts together. In fact, that's getting a lot easier. There's natural language prompting, which means you just basically got to describe what you want to have happen. And you can create automations. You can create applications just by discussing it. 
But again, it's a task-related one. If we know we can automate those pieces now, what happens when there's an avatar that we can give those automated pieces to that the avatar does? This fundamentally changes the way that we interact with people in terms of educating, but also if we're creating courses or teaching, whether it be online and or doing any kind of interactive sessions now, we're going to have an avatar to do that. So just to give you an idea how powerful this is, uh, I picked up a couple different uh, sites here, just examples of tools uh, that are happening here. Uh, one of them is called Tavis. I'm going to do deep dive videos on these ones, but uh, you know, you can actually have interactive avatars now so that these are AI automated, AI generated, uh, generated avatars that can interact back and forth in a responsive manner with people. So there's one called Tavis. There's another one called Synesthesia. And I, I did Hey Gen. I did Synesthesia. I did them in the spring of this year when they kind of got announced slash popular. I'm not saying that they came out then, but I covered them in the spring. And these are ones where you and me basically show a video of ourselves and it creates an avatar that will create us. And some of these will automatically sound like us. They do the audio part. Other ones, you may have to use something like um, Eleven Labs to create the audio and then put them together. Bottom line is we can automate that and have an avatar that is there to replace the delivery of the content that we would normally do and even make it interactive if we wanted to. There's another one here called uh, Colossin, or Col I think it's called Colossin. This one is incredibly powerful because you can just give it content to avatar. So whether it's a PowerPoint that you had, a PDF that you downloaded from someone, any of your content in your platform, you're now able to create materials from this, from your own avatar that is interactive on your grounded knowledge base and information. So if you're thinking about what's the best tool for me to use to do a particular task, whether it be create a script or, uh, you know, create a lesson plan or something like that. And we've got 2026, it's the end of 2025 right now, but we got a situation where these tools are already available they're good now. What's going to happen in the spring of 2026, three months from now or four months from now? Natural language prompting, it's already there. Documents uploaded, it's already there. I'm thinking when I'm looking at this, I'm trying to think of what's kind of the next step or the next tool. And I think that's the wrong question. I'm trying really hard not to think that way because I think with all of these tools being available to everyone, whether it's a person you're teaching or the person you're trying to sell the course to, they can create their own person to teach them what it is that they need. So where is the structure or the strategy or how are we going to use or apply these tools for our education business? It's not about creating a course. It is about creating an ecosystem or a way that you can have an experience learning, whether it be from you directly, or in some cases from your avatar. And that move to strategy is gonna be the really, really exciting part. Now, if you aren't familiar with any of this stuff and how it all fits together, please make sure to like and subscribe uh, to uh, the channel, but also visit trainingsites.io forward slash join. Uh, I've spent the last year and a bit really collecting all of the information that I can about starting and building a growing education business. And the thing that we focus on primarily is helping people build their own privately branded campus. Now, the reason we're doing that is because of strategy. And I'll tell you what I mean by that. So if I'm thinking about, you know, what am I going to do here with my business? and you are in the education space, I think there's three keys to it. And these are the ones that are all about strategy, not which the best tool is, but this is the strategy to consider moving forward when we have avatars. What am I talking about? I'm talking about having your own community platform. The strategies moving forward are all about who owns their own platform. If you take a look at some of the news that's been available, you'll see that all of the large language model tools, especially OpenAI as an example, 
they are jamming money into their platform to deliver the AI. If we're going to be in the education space, we have to have our own platform to deliver our content, irrespective of the format that it gets delivered as. Whether that's something that someone downloads or reads in your community from your community library, or if it's an avatar that allows people to interact with the avatar based on your information, having that platform, I think, is probably the key strategy moving forward. If you don't have your own platform, and we just showed an example of some of those sites, why would someone bother going to your campus if it doesn't have that organized and curated data that the avatar was running off of? If someone wants to create their own avatar, they certainly can, but they still have to do the research and put the pieces together. So collecting and curating, researching and validating, your particular category, your particular topic, your own community, that is the key to all of these platforms. And that's why we're building it for people. From that, I'm suggesting that the real value for anyone who teaches or anyone who's always done courses, the whole idea of e-learning, I think is in serious trouble and especially learning management software plugins. I think the interactive classes slash sprints slash workshops where you're actually interfacing live with people online, whether it be Google Meet or Zoom calls, where you're actually working on stuff, helping people in groups and or individually apply the information in their unique situation so that they're getting personalized learning, which is something I'm going to cover again in another video because there is AI for that now as well. But having those learning experiences and it being able to teach again, I think is a huge value proposition and an easy way to monetize all of your expertise. If you have your own community and your platform to pull from in terms of uh, validating what your approaches are, but also understanding the way that it needs to be presented to them. And then finally, I think, you know, you know, we're still going to have to have some kind of business where what are we going to do here? How are we going to create a business that is about us and what we do? How are we going to be able to have it where it's something we can grow, something that we can focus on the parts that we really like to do? How are those things all going to be put together? This is the exciting part of strategy is that if you think more along the lines of how am I going to put these together, not which is the best tool to use today, or tomorrow or in an hour from now to do one little piece of it. How is this all going to fit together? How are we going to be uh, in control of what it is that we're actually baking here? And I always use this, not always, I like to use this analogy. It's like if you are taking a look and you're figuring, man, I want to have a course. Think of it like you're basically baking something that is part of a meal. Like if you're going to add bread to your meal, you got to figure out, you know, how am I going to, you know, mix the ingredients? How am I going to knead the bread? There are plenty of tools that you can get to make that easier and faster. So having that tool to be able to mix up the dough, having a tool to knead the bread, those are like AI tools that we can plug in to that particular task. If you start thinking about having automations, it might be saying, well, how can I do that faster? Or how can I even get it done for me? When you start to think strategically, then you start going, okay, great. What are the other parts of the meal? How do they work together? And who's going to manage that? So that meal with a sous chef to guide everything, think of these agents and agent, orchestrating agent, and then us as the chef to understand what is it that we want to bake? What is it we want to cook? And having these tools available to us to do everything. That is about strategy, picking the meals that you want to cook and how you want them cooked. So if you're thinking about courses, think bigger, think business, think strategy on how you're going to be able to get away from being confined to how do I create a better script? How do I create some graphics for this? How do I come up with the videos? What are the different things that I need to do for video? And am I afraid to be on camera? And all of those questions that you're looking for tools to fix. This other stuff's coming. It's coming really quickly. 
So pay attention and have some fun in your education business. This is James speaking. Like and subscribe to the channel. We'll be right back with another great video.